Well, back now with our campaign insiders. According to the latest Fox News poll, the president's health care law remains unpopular. Well, Rick Santorum knows it and continues to try to tie Mitt Romney to it. Here he is on ABC Today. The more I look at the record of Governor Romney and match it up against Barack Obama, I feel like I'm doing a training run for the general election. Are you saying that there's not much difference between Romney and Obama? You know, unfortunately, Governor Romney and, and Barack Obama are in the same place. This idea of government mandates and control of the economy and, you know, the bailouts and the, and the attempt to try to take over, uh, you know, the, uh, the energy use in our country through cap and trade and, and, of course, the successful takeover of the economy, Obamacare. All right, so the candidates may have had the first word on the Sunday talk show, so we're going to bring in our campaign insiders again for the last word on what they had to say. The Fox News campaign insiders are Doug Schoen, Pat Cadell, and former New York Congressman John LeBoutlier. Congressman, let me start with you. Um, can Romney get out from under this thing? being tied to Obamacare? Well, what we just saw is why he struggled so much to get this nomination. He still is the favorite to get it. it t he, he has struggled for f six years with this issue. And if he is the nominee, that issue's off the table in the general election. Romney can bring it up, but Obama can turn to him and say, you did the same thing. I copied you. Our law is a mirror image of yours. And it's, it's, it's a shame because Republican voters don't like, they hate Obamacare and would like a contrast in the general election. Pat? So do independents. I mean, the numbers on health care, as we have written, Doug and I have written articles since the beginning, since 2009, and I said the night it was passed, this is a crime against democracy in people's eyes. They don't like the way it was passed. They think it's, it's going to take their good health care away. And they also believe it's going to bust the, the budget, which we now know. Mm -hmm. The problem for Romney is he has no body language that shows he's really against it. In fact, there is an emotional vacuum in this race, whether it's on the deficit or in health care for Republicans, in which I really look at a candidate and I say, my God, that man really has a passion on that issue. Right. Romney could have a narrative. His narrative is, please don't bring it up. And it is yeah. gonna, it's painful and well, it's going to hurt. You know what, Doug? Um, Santorum expands the argument. He says Romney and Gingrich both sided with Barack Obama in the individual mandate health care, cap and trade, and TARP bailouts. Right. And I, Rick Santorum, right. he argues, and the only person who can right. contrast with Barack Obama. Two-thirds of the Republican primary voters, Greg, are self-described conservatives. Some states, as many as 60, 70, even 80 percent are evangelicals. Rick Santorum understands that if he can turn this into a one-on-one -on -one or a one-on-two contest, he has a chance to win. But only by doing that does he have a chance to create a contrast with Romney that would work to his advantage. Well, I'm not sure he's going to be able to do it. I want to play another uh, Rick Santorum soundbite again from ABC This Morning. Take a listen to this argument. See if Governor Romney's willing to come out. He's been turning down every single debate. Uh, he's hiding behind the billionaires who are funding his super PAC and spending outrageous amounts of money, all running negative ads. Now, Congressman, that's a bit curious because Romney, in a debate in Florida, annihilated Newt Gingrich. And then in the Arizona debate, he put away Rick Santorum. Well, was... uh, you know, beware what you wish for, Rick Santorum. That, that's true. That debate in Phoenix the week before, I think, the Michigan primary was the chance for Santorum to seize the momentum of the race. And he blew it. He was and, terrible and, in the debate. Yeah. And that, right. that, that debate and the rest of that week cost him Michigan, yeah. cost him a chance to win Ohio, and cost him a chance to be the real new, the new front runner. Yeah, well, none of these guys are the head of the debate team. But huh. let me move well. forward to you know, Puerto Rico and Illinois. We were talking during the break. There's a delegate problem right. there, right? In Pat? Illinois. Yes, there's a delegate problem. It turns out that the invincible Romney campaign turned out they had depended on the state treasurer to file delegates. He didn't file them. They raced in. They notarized them illegally out of state. And they've been challenging Santorum. Now, both sides are saying they're going to let this go. My, my reaction to this is how could this happen? We've had seen the same thing in Puerto Rico. The Santorum campaign has yep. had problems. We see it now in a lot of contests. The reason is the Romney campaign is, and this is just an insight from my experiences, they thought this thing would all be over by now. This is a problem of not being prepared, even the Romney campaign and, for a long and time. And there's a, a large issue that looms. If the convention is deadlocked or appears to be deadlocked going into it, there could be multiple delegate challenges 
in Tampa this summer. Uh, and if there are delegate challenges and the party stays divided, the only person who wins is Barack Obama. There is increasing talk of a broker convention. In fact, front page of the New York Times today. If Romney doesn't get the necessary 1,144 delegates, um, it could go several ballots then, right? And don't at some point in time, some of these delegates become free agents? Yes. And, and, and I think the, the, the worry for uh, uh, Romney, and he's been talking privately about it, is that at a deadlock convention, the party could turn to a new candidate who doesn't have the negatives, who hasn't been through the last year of mudslinging. And, and we think that if the Republicans pick the right new guy, he could win the election because Obama won't be ready for a new guy. Pat. He'll have eight weeks to, to go after a new one. I think that, you know, conventional thinking, including mine, is that if you go to a convention and it's deadlocked, they have to fight this out, it will be a disaster. I think it will be if it's a fight over these three people making a deal. That's a broker convention, an open convention in which a new candidate emerges. In an election year where the public wants somebody to oppose Obama that they like, and it's not there, if you produce a candidate... There, I'm not sure we're not, we haven't changed politics this yeah. year. Give me some names, guys. Jeb, well, Jeb Bush, Chris Christie, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch Daniels. Daniels. Wait, 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 wait. Jeb Bush. Yeah. Is America ready for another Bush presidency? I, I think the question is if they're not ready for another Obama presidency, a governor who is inclusive, who supports rational budgetary policies, competition in education, very I think yeah. would be very solid. But, Daniels had a good response on the State of the Union. Right. Chris Christie is a a breakthrough candidate. But what if you took two of those guys and made a ticket? Yeah, well, that's the point. Exactly. We, could create, we forget when, in the new, because we think backwards, but when Palin was first named and she did very well at her convention speech before everything else happened to her, boy, that really vaulted McCain. It changed the dynamics. We live in a time when this can happen. These candidates are so, in my opinion, weak, and Obama is so prepared to run against them, as John was saying, this may be the year that we throw out the conventional wisdom because what the country wants and the politics they're getting are two different things. Quickly. And quickly, Greg, the Republican candidates, Santorum, Romney, Gingrich, understand this. They could team up, oppose one another to forestall what Pat's describing. All right, Doug Schoen, Pat Cadell, uh, Congressman John LeBoutlier, good to see you all. Our Thank campaign you. insiders, you can get more from the insiders every Monday at 11 a.m. at live.foxnews.com, and they will be back here. In these chairs next Sunday, you can also follow them on Twitter at FN Insiders. Gentlemen, thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Great. Heather? Thank Very interesting. Good stuff, guys. Thank you.